President Betancourt, it's a pleasure to have you visit us here in Washington. I, in particular, am pleased to have had this opportunity to reciprocate the hospitality that you extended to me during my visit to Bogota in 1982. Your present visit, Mr. President, gives us the opportunity to affirm once again the solid ties of friendship and goodwill between our two countries. As the leaders of free people, we share a commitment to the democratic ideals which are at the heart of our societies. Today, we have renewed our mutual commitment to promoting democracy in this hemisphere, pursuing peace in Central America, and eliminating the scourge of narcotics trafficking from our societies. We have also explored areas of cooperation which can enhance the economic well-being. Colombia and El Salvador, for example, have invited talks with their opponents and encouraged them to be part of a truly democratic process. Those who seek democracy in Nicaragua have asked the Sandinistas to engage in talks as a step toward peace and democracy in Nicaragua. We hope that the Sandinistas will take that step toward reconciliation. Later today, I will be talking to the American people in greater detail about this subject. I am glad that President Betancourt and I were able to discuss how the United States can best help the Contadora countries achieve all of the agreed upon objectives for Central America, including national reconciliation in Nicaragua. Mr. President, we admire your determination to end the strife which has plagued your country. The citizens of Colombia are indeed lucky to have a leader of vision, courage, and compassion. We wish you success and hope that those who have fought with weapons learn to work within the democratic process. It is appropriate that we praise your efforts to foster peace and brotherhood during this Holy Week. Mr. President, your personal courage and dedication are also evident in your government's all-out battle against narcotics traffickers. You have my unbounded respect for what you're doing. The production of illicit narcotics and the peddling of these drugs corrupt our societies, our children, and with them, our future. The struggle against this unmitigated evil unites all good and decent people. We look forward to Mrs. Betancourt's return here later this month to join Nancy and other First Ladies in discussing the problem, especially as it affects our young people. In the United States, the fight against drug use has a top priority. We're trying to help those on drugs get off, to prevent those not involved from starting, and we're doing our best to smash the trade in illegal drugs. This matter is of vital concern to us both, and in finding solution to the problem, Colombia and the United States are full partners, as we affirm today in our joint statement on narcotics. The illegal drug trade, as we both agree, is a cancer. Commercial trade, on the other hand, serves the interest of both our peoples. While Americans enjoy Colombian products such as coffee, cut flowers, and tropical fruits, Colombians benefit from U.S. technology and goods such as heavy machinery, chemicals, and wheat. At a time when both our governments trampled or grapple with trade deficits in a world of many trading partners, let us build on our history of cooperation to develop trade policies which strengthen our economies, give incentive to enterprise, and encourage exchange between our people. I look forward, Mr. President, to working closely with you on these and other significant matters. On behalf of the United States, I extend warm wishes to both you, President Betancourt, and to the Colombian people. We bid you farewell. We wish you a safe and happy journey home and a happy Easter. Señor Presidente, señores ministros, culmina hoy en el ambiente hospitalario de la Casa Blanca la visita que desde meses atrás y por gentil invitación del presidente Reagan me había propuesto realizar a los Estados Unidos. Ha sido en verdad una grata oportunidad para dialogar con él 
con el vicepresidente Bush, con el secretario Schulz y con otros miembros de su gobierno sobre diversos temas, unos de alcance multilateral y otros de naturaleza bilateral, pero todos ellos de interés para el conjunto de los pueblos de América y en particular para nuestras dos naciones. President, members of the cabinet, my visit to the United States, which was planned some months ago at the invitation of President Reagan, comes to an end today in the cordial climate of the White House. It has been a good opportunity to speak with President Reagan, with Vice President Bush, with Secretary Schultz, and with other members of this administration on several issues, some bilateral, other multilateral, which are of interest to the people of the Americas and in particular to our two nations. Hoy, por invitación suya, nos reunimos en Washington para examinar diversos temas multilaterales y bilaterales. Entre los primeros, la crisis centroamericana, el proceso de democratización de América Latina, los problemas derivados de la deuda externa, el fortalecimiento del Acuerdo Internacional del Café y de los organismos multilaterales de crédito y la lucha internacional contra el narcotráfico. Entre los segundos, el programa de ajuste macroeconómico con autodisciplina y desarrollo de Colombia y el intercambio comercial colombo-americano. También he aprovechado esta visita para intercambiar ideas con distinguidos miembros del Congreso, con altos dignatarios de las instituciones financieras internacionales con destacadas personalidades del sector académico y con prominentes líderes del sector privado norteamericano. Today, at your invitation, we have met in Washington to examine a number of multilateral and bilateral issues. Among the first, the Central American crisis, the process of greater democracy in Latin America, the problems stemming from the foreign debt, the strengthening of the International Coffee Agreement, and of multilateral lending institutions and the international fight against drugs, against the drug traffic. Among the latter, the macroeconomic adjustment program with self-discipline and economic growth and the trade relations between Colombia and the United States. I have also taken advantage of this visit to exchange ideas with distinguished congressmen, with senior officials from the international financial institutions, with outstanding personalities from the academic world and important leaders from the U.S. private sector. In relation to the Central tuve oportunidad de expresar mi preocupación frente a los problemas que vive esta afligida región. Me permití insistir sobre la urgencia de reactivar el proceso negociador de contadora y agotar todos los esfuerzos de persuasión para poner en marcha, a través del acta de contadora, los principios, compromisos y recomendaciones contenidos en el documento de objetivos. Durante mi reciente visita a los países centroamericanos, pude comprobar el renovado deseo de todos ellos de abrirle nuevas oportunidades al diálogo y en el caso de los países que integran el grupo de contadora, su decisión de propiciar estas oportunidades. Regarding the Central American issue, I was able to bring up my concern with the problems that affect that region. I insisted on the urgency of reactivating the negotiating process of Contadora and of exhausting all efforts of conviction to implement the principles, commitments, and recommendations which are part of the document of objectives of the Act of Contadora. During a recent visit to the Central American region countries, I was able to see for myself the renewed desire on their part to provide new possibilities for a dialogue and for the countries which are part of the Contadora group, their determination to offer whatever possibilities there may be in this same respect. Me complace manifestar que en mis conversaciones de hoy con el señor presidente he encontrado el mismo ánimo constructivo y su decisión de crear condiciones propicias para que puedan desarrollarse diálogos de reconciliación que conduzcan finalmente a la plena participación de las fuerzas políticas y sociales en los procesos democráticos de los países afectados por la violencia y a la controversia civil. Me complace que el gobierno de los Estados Unidos en este momento crucial se asome a los problemas centroamericanos con mente abierta y confío en que esa misma actitud prevalezca en toda la región. I am pleased to state that in my talks today with President Reagan, I have encountered the same constructive spirit and 
his decision to provide propitious conditions to carry out reconciliation dialogues that will ultimately lead to the full participation of the political and social forces in the democratic process of the countries affected by violence and civil strife. I am pleased that the U.S. government at this critical moment is approaching the problems of Central America with an open mind, and I am certain that this attitude will prevail throughout the region. En el tema de narcóticos y la lucha frontal que libra mi país en este campo, me remito a los términos del comunicado que hemos emitido conjuntamente, expresión clara y categórica de la voluntad de los dos países de trabajar unidos para salvar a la humanidad de este horrendo flagelo. En el transcurso de las conversaciones con las autoridades de los Estados Unidos, me permití destacar el vínculo existente entre deuda externa y democracia y solicité una ronda de negociaciones multilaterales para facilitar las exportaciones de los países en desarrollo. Observé con interés que los Estados Unidos miran la próxima cumbre económica de Bonn como una buena oportunidad para examinar este importante tema. Y en cuanto al programa autónomo de ajuste macroeconómico de Colombia, deseo dejar una constancia del apoyo constructivo que le están brindando el Banco Interamericano de Desarrollo, el Banco Mundial, el Fondo Monetario, lo mismo que el gobierno de los Estados Unidos a través de la Reserva Federal y de la Secretaría del Tesoro. He comprobado personalmente ese apoyo durante mi visita a Washington. Este es un programa diseñado por nuestro equipo económico para corregir el déficit fiscal y el desequilibrio de la balanza de pagos y que esos organismos han encontrado como apropiado y consistente. Esperamos convenir en breve plazo los mecanismos de monitoría y concretar la participación de los bancos comerciales. On the subject of narcotics, uh, we are carrying out a frontal assault in my country in this respect. I refer you to the communique that, the pres that President Reagan and I have issued, which clearly and categorically expresses the will of both countries to work together to rescue hum humanity from this couch. During the conversations with the authorities of the United States, I underscored the link that there is, the existing link that there is between the external debt and democracy, and requested that a new round of negotiations, multilateral negotiations, be held to ease exports from developing countries. I have noted with interest that the United States looks upon the coming economic summit to be held at Bonn as a good occasion to examine these, this important subject. In connection to Colombia's autonomous program of macroeconomic adjustment, I wish to place on record the positive support that we have received from the Inter-American Inter Development Bank, from the World Bank, from the International Monetary Fund, as well as from the government of the United States through its Federal Reserve and from the Treasury Department. I have personally seen tangible proof of this support while on this visit. Señor Presidente, creemos que ha llegado el momento, como tuve oportunidad de expresarlo ante el Congreso, para que los Estados Unidos y América Latina redefinan los parámetros de su relación mutua. Necesitamos, señor Presidente, un nuevo trato, una nueva comprensión, una doctrina común, una alianza para la paz y el desarrollo en América Latina. Es el ánimo de, decidido de pasar de la simple tolerancia que rige la mayor parte de las relaciones latinoamericanas con los Estados Unidos a la elaboración de un nuevo esquema de cooperación franca, constructiva y fecunda. Este nuevo trato, esta alianza para la paz, no procura únicamente el mejoramiento de las relaciones económicas en el hemisferio, sino también la adopción de propósitos políticos en torno a la defensa de la democracia, que es el gran valor espiritual de la civilización americana. Y de este consenso, señor Presidente, saldrían fortalecidas las instituciones políticas del hemisferio, multiplicadas las posibilidades de la paz y más abiertas las perspectivas de un desarrollo sostenido. A different time. We believe that the time has come, as I said before Congress, for the United States and Latin America to redefine the parameters of their mutual relations. We need what I would call a new treatment, a new understanding, a common doctrine, an alliance for peace, with the determination to go from mere tolerance that has marked the relations between Latin America and the United States to the formulation of a new scheme of open, constructive, and fruitful cooperation. 
This new treatment, this Alliance for Peace, will not only improve rela economic relations in the hemisphere, but it will also mean the adoption of political objectives uh, to defend democracy, which is the great spiritual value of American civilization. This consensus would allow us to strengthen the hemisphere's political institutions, would enhance the likelihood of peace and the possibilities of an enduring economic growth. Finalmente, señor presidente y señores ministros, no es posible en estas breves palabras recoger en su integridad los alcances de esta visita a los Estados Unidos cumplida mediante un apretado e intenso programa. He transmitido a las autoridades con franqueza y sin subterfugios la totalidad de mi pensamiento sobre los temas de interés común. He sido escuchado con atención y respeto como corresponde a la tradición libre y democrática de esta gran nación. Me complace registrarlo así y confío que mis opiniones y comentarios sirvan para una mejor comprensión en los Estados Unidos sobre América Latina, este extenso, hermoso y dinámico subcontinente que ama la libertad y entiende que para preservarla y fortalecerla es fundamental la justicia indispens e indispensable el desarrollo. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Finally, Mr. President and members of the Cabinet, it is not altogether possible in these brief remarks to bring out the significance that I assigned to this historic visit to the United States, which has had a very tight schedule, as you know. I have made, note, I have made known to the authorities, candidly and without subterfuges, the totality of my ideas on issues which are of interest to us both. I have been heard with attention and respect as befits the tradition of freedom and democracy of this great nation. I am pleased to state that it has been so, and that I hope that my views and remarks will create a greater climate of understanding between the United States and Latin America, this vast, beautiful, and dynamic subcontinent that cherishes freedom and understands that to maintain and strengthen it, we need justice and we need development. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Positive answer to that yet. Well, do you have any kind of a deal? Do you have a Democrats on the uh, aid for uh, Nicaragua? Well, we have a proposal that we're going to. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. 